Hi everyone, this is just a quick demo of my new uh, virtual studio template that you can find on my GitHub, which is listed in the description of the video. So we're going to just give you a quick uh, look around. Sorry that the screen is a little cramped. I'm trying to do this in 1080p so that everybody will uh, be able to read the text and everything. If I do it in 4K, some people have trouble uh, actually reading the text because it comes out too small. So first, uh, over here in the world outliner, this uh, may look somewhat similar to my previous template, except there seems to be two of everything. And uh, the reason for this is that this template supports two cameras. So there's two garbage mats, two VP media plates, two studio backgrounds, and so on, uh, one for each camera. And looking a little further down, you can see now that there are two talent marks here. That's because you can set different places in the set where you want your talent to appear and jump back and forth between them. Uh, that also is why you see two tracking pucks and two different camera rigs. Uh, there's also a couple of other things tied to tracking pucks uh, that I use just generally for alignment and measurement. So now I'll switch over to the Pi screen so you can see what this looks like. Uh, one of the first new features of this is what we've been calling the inspection camera. Uh, and if you take a look here, you can see that I can move this camera around and I can al also drive it around using the... Uh, keyboard keys. And what this gives you is a way to take a good look at what your studio is set up. So right now all those cameras that you see they are tracking live. So if I uh, reach over here and move my camera you'll see it actually move. Uh, that big target on the ground there is another puck that I use for measuring things and if I move it it moves and so on. So uh, you can pretty much immediately see through this inspection mode if your cameras are tracking uh, and if they're pointed the right direction and all your set pieces are in the right place. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here on this camera, which is actually a model of my A7R4 and it's attached to a rig that's attached to a tracker. That's another new feature of this template. You can see there's an actual model of the tracker here and also a model of the rig that attaches the tracker to the camera. That's those uh, cubes and cylinders that represent how the camera is bolted to the tracker. Uh, this is the other camera I use. I don't have a good model for it, so I just made one up out of a, a cube and a couple of cylinders. Uh, and this also represents the rig that's used to attach the tracker to the camera. So now I've backed off a little bit and I can show you one of the other features of this new system. Uh, you see there's a couple of squares on the ground with uh, red X's in them. Those are your talent markers uh, and that's where your live talent will appear when you're running uh, the virtual studio. Uh, right now we're on the first talent marker which is over near that big white rectangle that represents the green screen. Uh, I can press a key and switch to the other talent marker which is a little closer to us and you see that the representations of the cameras, the green screen, and everything else jump to the new marker. Uh, now it may not be exactly obvious what this is going to do but in uh, when you're running a virtual production that just basically will teleport everything to a new location. So you'll, wear, you'll be at the location of the first talent marker and then all of a sudden you'll, your video will jump to the location of the second one. Another thing you can do is uh, get the direct views from the cameras that show you the CG only without the composite that each of the cameras sees. So there's what one camera sees and there's the other one. And then we can jump back to the inspection camera. Another thing that you can do with this, uh, you've already noticed we've, uh, we can move the inspection camera around. We can also move around the talent markers and this works live uh, so you can do it during the, uh, the recording and your talent will appear to be ice skating across inside the level. Uh, and what that looks like is this, you can see from the inspection camera view that I'm moving my talent marker around. Uh, and also using the mouse I can rotate it and tilt it and do whatever I want to with it. Now for some applications that tilting 
behavior is really kind of unwanted because it can line up your camera so it's not level with the floor. So it's possible to just go into the player controller blueprint and turn that axis off if you want to. And then the camera will always be level. So as I mentioned earlier, the VP Studio template has a new way of connecting trackers to cameras that makes it a little bit easier to get the alignment of the tracker and the camera right, even if your uh, rig for connecting the tracker has a, a few places where it can wiggle or twist. Uh, right now you're looking at a close-up of the actual camera rig and my A7R4 camera as uh, represented in Unreal Studio. And I'll show you a photo of what the real camera rig looks like as an inset so you can follow along easier. One of the things you'll notice about this is that the tracker isn't oriented the way I usually do it. Uh, normally the USB socket would be facing the back of the camera and to here it's uh, turned to the left uh, and that uh, presents some alignment issues that sometimes can be a pain to do but in this template it's actually pretty easy and I'll show you how that works. Uh, if we go over back to the Unreal Editor and I switch to this is the actual rig that's used to connect the tracker to the camera. Uh, this is without the camera showing up. Uh, so each one of these little sticks and blocks represents some connections uh, in the real world that you saw in the picture of the camera rig itself. Uh, it's very easy to build these. In fact, you don't even have to do any of this graphic stuff. Uh, all you really need to do is make some scene elements that represent each one of the potential joints on your tracker and the distance between them. Uh, I'll have a tutorial later that shows how to do that in detail. So one of the nice things about this setup is that you can build little adjustments into your rig in case the rig gets a little bit out of alignment. Say you uh, have the tracker twist on its mounting screw a little bit or maybe it uh, has a ball joint or some other kind of joint that uh, you can't get perfectly straight and you need to make adjustments. This lets you adjust things here in Unreal uh, so you don't have to go around and mess around with the actual physical hardware. So as you can see in the attached picture of the real A7R mounting rig, uh, it's got a couple of places that can bend and twist. There's a tilt joint just below the tracker, and it's also possible for the tracker to twist on its mounting screw and become misaligned that way. Uh, now, uh, in order to fix that, uh, we built a couple of things into the new tracking setup. You can see here the A7R4 rig, which by itself looks like this is just a collection of joints and links. Now you don't actually have to have it all graphically here for it to work. All you really need to do is get the positions of these different nodes correct uh, to, so that they match the measurements of your real rig. Then for this rig there's some adjustments you can make. Uh, you can see here there's a tilt and a twist and I'll show you what those can do. Uh, let's jump back over to looking at the actual rig. So for example if the uh, joint below the tracker is a little out of true uh, I can make it tilt just like that by any amount that you want. Uh, and you know that's a bit of a ridiculous example because normally you're going to be close to straight but if it's not perfectly straight in the real world, you can uh, true it up here inside of Unreal. Same thing goes for twisting. I can twist the camera. That's quite a big twist, but you can see how if the tracker was slightly misaligned, you could use this to switch it back and get it straightened out again. The reason for this new system is to make it easier to get the tracker in any alignment properly hooked up to the camera. So you notice here on this view of the A7R rig, the USB plug on the side of the tracker is pointing to the left. Now that's uh, not the way I normally do it. Uh, if, you, if we bin, spin around here and take a look at the other camera rig, let's just quickly navigate up to where it is, you can see that on this rig, the USB plug on the tracker is facing to the rear. Uh, now normally getting the rotations and everything right is kind of a pain in the neck, but if you build one of these rigs, it automatically aligns everything for you. 
the other thing that's good about this new approach is, as you notice here, the uh, camera rigs are actually made of several pieces. There's the puck, the actual rig, the model of the camera, and then the camera that Unreal uses to look at the scene. Uh, so what's good about this is you can use different rigs with different cameras uh, just by connecting them together differently. Uh, also, if you have something other than Vive pucks that you're using for tracking, like say an OptiTrack or uh, a mechanical tracking system, uh, you can just replace the Vive puck with a uh, similar actor that does the, sa the tracking that you have. So now I've switched to the actual virtual production view and we're looking through camera one. You can see in here uh, the headset is sitting on the floor. There's a pole with a tracker on top of it, and there's a curtain rod that represents the back wall of the screen. I just use that for alignment. Um, there'll be a better example of this with me in the picture in a minute. Uh, you can see the uh, camera, the A7R camera to the right, is actually visible. Uh, you can turn that off easily if your cameras get in your shot or if their shadows get in your shot. You can just make them hidden. Uh, but here I've got them visible, so we can see a little better what the layout is. And then this is the, lay uh, the view from camera two. Again, one and two. So you can see, you can switch between, say, a close-up and a wide shot, or just two different angles on the presenter. I also showed you earlier how you could uh, move the talent markers around in real time using the keyboard keys. And I'll show you what that looks like now that we're actually in the world. You can see when I move, all of the live elements stay centered on that talent marker. That's the square with the X on it. So you can sort of make your talent marker or talent look like they're ice skating through the world. Or if you wanted to have sort of an elevator style effect, you could make them go up and back down again. Now generally if you're using uh, this while you're filming, it's going to be kind of hard to control. So you probably would want to record an animation or use some kind of a blueprint script to uh, move the cameras around. So now here I am out in the actual virtual studio and I'm standing on the talent marker and this is a view from camera two and this is a view from camera one. You can see I've got my microphone on me in a stand in front of me just because I'm too lazy to set up the wireless mic. So the cameras aren't perfectly color balanced yet. Uh, normally you do the color balance and lighting balance to match whatever background you were using and since this is a very simple one I haven't really tried to get a perfect match. Uh, I'll do another uh, demo later on with a more interesting background than this default one and uh, then you'll be able to see what it's supposed to look like. So camera two, camera one, camera two, camera one, and back to camera two. Just like a real TV studio. So I hope you found this video interesting. The next video I do is going to be the start of a set of tutorials on how to set up and use this new VP Studio template. I'll see you then.